good morning everyone welcome to the class of ce 333 environmental engineering 2 so we were discussing sewer so today we will start from here which is sewer corrosion sewer corrosion so if you look at the cross section of a sewer this blue portion actually representing the sewage so this is the sewage okay now this sewage uh, usually contains what sulfate okay now it also has water and other substances so they react together okay they react together and they produces bicarbonate ion and hydrogen sulfide and who does this who does this react reaction anaerobic bacteria okay so anaerobic bacteria actually reduce sulfate ion to sulfide ion that means hydrogen sulfide did I make it clear? Yes, sir. So, again, anaerobic bacteria reduce sulfate ion, which is present in the sewage, to produce sulfide ion, that means hydrogen sulfide. So, this hydrogen sulfide gas travels upward and accumulates at the top of the sewer okay now what happens that there is oxygen right so this hydrogen sulfide in the presence of oxygen and there is another type of bacteria here this is called sulfur oxidizing bacteria sob so in the presence of sulfur oxidizing bacteria sob this hydrogen sulfide in the presence of oxygen they produce H2SO4. Now H2SO4 is what guys? This is an acid, am I right? Sulfuric acid, sir. Sulfuric acid. So this is corrosive. That means it, it corrodes material. That means H2SO4 here make corrosion in the sewer. So as a result, you will see there is corrosion, that means breakage. I mean, breakage of the sewer material or pipe. Did I make it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will create various leaks here or leakage. Okay, so this is called microbially induced corrosion. So, if you look at the process again, the sulfate which was present in the sewage was reduced by the anaerobic bacteria, anaerobic bacteria which is present here. Okay. And this anaerobic bacteria reduce sulfate ion to sulfide ion. That is hydrogen sulfide gas. Okay. This hydrogen sulfide gas travels upward. And here, another type of bacteria that's called sulfur oxidizing bacteria in the presence of oxygen oxidize this hydrogen sulfide to hydrogen to H2SO4 and this H2SO4 since this is an acid this causes corrosion in the sewer pipe so you see many leaks generating in the sewer of course we don't want this right so this is called sewer corrosion uh, through what? Sulfide attack. 
sulfide attack because this is happening because of sulfide as well as the bacteria so microbially induced corrosion microbial means you know the bacteria virus and other microorganisms so this process has been discussed here okay concrete at a sewage treatment plant may be exposed to simultaneous effect of different chemical and physical mechanisms causing unexpectedly to rapid degradation takes place when low pH waste usually industrial waste comes in contact with the concrete in sewer structure concrete of sewer may be exposed to sulfuric acid produced by microorganisms sulfates and chlorides containing water as well as changeable temperature uh, of freezing and thawing so this is one process this is another process we are discussing this process here this is basically microbially mediated corrosion which is called sulfide attack so this process starts when naturally natural microbiology biology that lives below the water line in a sphere converts sulfate into ionic sulfide which is then chemically changed into dissolved hydrogen sulfide this dissolved hydrogen sulfide is then released from the water by turbulence and is splashing to exist as hydrogen sulfide gas which causes objectionable order. Finally, this hydrogen sulfide gas is converted to sulfuric acid by a second type of bacteria that lives above the water line here. The resulting sulfuric acid destroys the concrete above the normal wastewater level in the pipe. The sulfuric acid drips back down into the wastewater where it is naturalized back into sulfate and the process begins all over again. This is called sear sulfide cycle. Okay. Now, you know, sear leakage is a costly problem. This sear is very large diameter pipes and replacing and they are under the ground right so replacing or fixing these sewers are expensive are you following me yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. so it's important to uh, solve this problem okay so what should be the solution? Number one, reduce slime layers by removing debris. Why? Because naturally occurring sulfate reducing bacteria live in a slime layer the so bacteria will attack a slime layer is slime at a layer for a second slime layer a month bacteria exist okay so reduce slime layers by removing Debris. The money of chair. You can have on it to the debris. Take a solid material to the hacker. This is solid material. Take then if solid material glur surface a bacteria grow for it. Where's 
जी सर सो द बिकॉज यू दे हैव ऑर्गेनिक मैटर इन द सीएच एज अ फूड सो बैक्टीरिया टेक दिस फूड एंड ग्रो इन द सरफेस ऑफ द डेब्रिस सो इफ यू कैन रिड्यूस दिस debris or remove this debris then bacteria now then amount of bacteria will be reduced therefore the generation of h2so4 will also be reduced number 2 control dissolved sulfide through chemical addition if you can stop this process here then it should also reduce the h2so4 generation sometimes you may use chemicals to control the dissolved sulfide hydrogen sulfide ion and this is hydrogen ion you can use chemical to convert them into some other chemicals that way you can control the acid attack reduce hydrogen sulfide gas release through turbulence reduction you know you have uh, turbulence current in this sphere that turbulence helps the hydrogen sulfide to emit from the sewage so if you can reduce the turbulence then this process will also be reduced and protect sensitive surfaces from the effect of acid generation how you can use maybe different types of protective layers here a coating of different protective layers to save the surface uh, from the effect of acid generation did you make it clear yes sir so you should learn this figure with this uh, explanation of sulfide attack as well as the solutions this is important okay any question guys no sir no sir okay sanitary sewer system mainly we have three types of uh sewer system one is gravity another one is pressure and the one is vacuum first of all this is the most common one gravity where you lay out your sewer in such a way that one end of the sewer is at upper elevation and the another end is at lower elevation so as a result the sewer will flow naturally through the effect of gravity am i right yes sir yes sir so this is called gravity sphere sometimes you may have a sphere like this horizontal and pardon my drawing here it's not good with the mouse uh, this sphere and then you use a pump here pump to transmit the sewage from here to there one into another end so you are using pressure by this pump to transmit the sewage right this is called pressure sewer now it's understandably 
you can imagine that to run this pump you need money right so this is expensive did I make it clear yes sir so most of the time we try to go for gravity sphere but sometimes although you are using a gravity sphere in majority of the parts of the sphere system in some portion like from the plan if you look at the plan so these are all gravity sphere for example okay but sometimes in some portion in this joint or in other places you may need to use pump okay yes sir Vacuum. Vacuum is just like the pressure system where instead of pressure you use a vacuum machine for example here vacuum machine so that you can use a, you can generate a vacuum here so that the water will be sucked or the sewage will be sucked so this is vacuum system. Pressure or pump system, gravity system, transported by gravity, I already told you. This is the pressure system. The vacuum system. Industrial wastewater collection option. Discharge to sanitary sewer from a treatment at a publicly owned wastewater treatment plant. Partial treatment on site and complete treatment to disposal options on site. That means uh, industrial wastewater. Huh? Industrial wastewater. Say, for example, this is an industry. So, in industry, you know, the wastewater characteristics might be different, are usually different from the wastewater coming from the residential houses or commercial house, uh, facilities, schools, banks. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Because, you know, industry yes, can be uh, a textile industry, a leather industry. Okay? So, a leather industry uses chromium salt to process the leather. So, in the wastewater, after processing the leather, the wastewater that you get, that wastewater contains chromium, which is a heavy metal and it causes cancer, you know. So this chromium is usually found in the industrial wastewater, not in the residential wastewater, usually, right? So this industrial wastewater has to be treated a bit differently. Now, if a sanitary sewer is running, and from the residential house and commercial houses you cannot mix this wastewater directly into the sanitary sewer 
Did I make it clear? Yes, sir. You yes, sir. may mix the wastewater into the sanitary sewer after treatment in a treatment plant. Okay? Where you have to reduce this chromium and other uh, pollutants up to a certain level and then you can discharge it into the sanitary sewer or after the treatment you can discharge it into the river after treatment of course so into the river that means receiving environment complete treatment in that case you have to make complete treatment on site that means here on site followed by release to receiving environment another one is what partial treatment on site partial treatment on site and then release the wastewater into the sanitary sewer clear yes sir Sometimes uh, this industry, if this is a benign industry, I mean, it does not produce these special pollutants and the pollutants from the industry is such like common to the pollutants of residential and commercial, in that case you can directly discharge, okay? without treating but remember you have to follow the guidelines of the environmental conservation rules okay if you can if you see that you can meet the guideline of environmental conservation rule of releasing wastewater from the industry to the residential or sanitary sewer then you can discharge it without treatment plant but if you see that your pollutants concentration is much higher to release to the sanitary sewer then you have to use the treatment plant at the first place and then next to sanitary sewer okay clear yes sir, yes, sir, sir. as i was telling you that almost always gravity flow system we try to give gravity flow system because this is the least expensive one cheaper one okay When you design a sanitary sewer, separate system, okay, when you are designing a sanitary sewer, this one. separated by the storm sewer, this one. The load, that means the amount of sewage that is coming from, uh, that is coming to the pipe, how you are gonna calculate this? You are calculated from the number of houses you have or number of facilities you have. And the amount of waste generation or sewage generation per unit of facilities then you can calculate the amount of sewage that is coming into the sewer sanitary sewer am i right yes sir but you have to remember that your sewer may have leakage and that leakage may allow some part of the rain water to infiltrate through the pipe so that means the sanitary sewer load should be 
the load coming from the facilities plus load coming from the infiltration am i right yes sir yes sir you have to remember this okay that's what they're telling you it leaking sanitary sphere and others now to design a sanitary sewer system first of all what do you need to know if i look at the design of a building first of all what do you need to know you need to know how much load is coming to the building am i right how much load right yes sir. similarly in sanitary sewer design of a sanitary sewer system you need to know how much load is coming here and the load in sanitary in, in sewer is basically the sewage the wastewater flow q that is the load right you need to know what is the load q So design flow, you need to know this. That actually determines the size of the sphere, that means diameter of the sphere. This must be adequate capacity to handle the waste flow at the end of the design period. You also have to remember that, um, you know, the human population is dynamic. Today, in 2021 the population is here in 2050 the population may be there right yes sir so and you know the sewer system these are constructed for a long design life because these are expensive you don't install sewer network on a daily basis the design period how long maybe 30 years 50 years let's say 30 years 2020 so you see that after 30 years the demand on the, the amount of population might be increased so your design flow should be the present flow present demand i mean present flow or present load as well as the load for the future am i right yes sir so you have to remember it you, you don't just design for today's demand you have to consider the demand after design period so that the sewer sufficiently serves until the design period. Okay. Now, another thing is sewer, a sewer contains sewage, right? Now this sewage contains, contains both liquid and solid. Am I right? Yes, sir. So there is a chance of solid gets getting deposited here. So after day after day after day, if this deposition occurs, then what would happen? Blockage then what would happen if would the sewer be able to pass through hmm? no sir it will so you have, to, you have to consider this so minimizing solid deposition how you know what 
For example, today there is a flow of sewage and there is solid deposition. Now you will design this sewer in such a way so that at least once in a day, at least once in a day, there is a velocity. The peak velocity, peak velocity that will wash out this solid deposition. That will wash out this solid deposition. Did I make it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's the minimum velocity that you have to provide in, in a sewer. Of course, how you how can you do that? You can control the diameter of the pipe or sewer. You can control the slope of the sewer. One bias, right? As you know, if I increase the slope, that means if I make the pipe steeper, then velocity will be higher, right? So, minimum velocity, this is incredibly important for the proper functioning of the sewer. That is the minimum velocity. Okay. We will learn this more in the upcoming lectures. Where does the wastewater come from? It can come from the sanitary, like commercial, institutional, industrial, residential. It can come from the storm water runoff, right? It can come from the infiltration, as I told you. Extraneous water that enters the sewer system from the ground through various means, like leakage and other things. And storm water that is discharged from the source, such as roof litters, foundation drains, storm sewers. Okay. Uh, water entering a sewer system through the mouth of the pipe from surface sources such as leaking manhole directly connected to root cutters and others. You should go through this. Infiltration to sanitary sewer system. Remember, one is inflow, another one is infiltration. What is the difference, by the way? Oh. the intrusion of the extraneous water through the leakage through the leakage this leakage this is infiltration are you following me yes sir what is inflow inflow is you know there is a manhole okay and this is a street right so rainwater may go there There may be leakage, the rainwater may go there and insert into the sewer. So this is from the mouth of the sewer, from the mouth of the sewer. So this is inflow. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Sir, also, infiltration is the direct way to both this sir. Infiltration is the intrusion of the water through the leakage infiltrate okay leakage in the surface of the pipe okay clear yes sir and inflow is basically which is entering from the mouth like you have uh, the rainfall in the roof and you have a gutter here water spout and from there the water main that's what we are calling inflow okay groundwater infiltration sometimes infiltration may occur from the groundwater 
the sources and rates of domestic wastewater flows small residential districts large residential districts now when you are going to calculate the load sewage load and if this is uh, a small area like a small area and it's easy to count the number of buildings okay easy to count the number of buildings then you can calculate the sewage load by calculate the, by estimating the sewage load generation from each of the building each of the building are you following me one by one yes sir yes but sir yes sir huge community or a big city where you have so many buildings and residences then it's difficult to go one by one so in that case you uh, use the land use i mean in that case you may have an you may use the idea of per unit population per unit land that means if this area is 100 hectare or 1000 hectare then for say you know in one hectare, the population is X. And then in thousand hectare, the population is thousand into X, something like that. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, if no data data is available, then sometimes you may estimate that seventy percent of the domestic wastewater withdrawal rate is returned to the sanitary sewage system. That means if this is the building, you are supplying fresh water, right? Like maybe 100 meter cube. Not 100, maybe the building is too much. Let's say 50 meter cube per second. Then in the sewer, you may consider 70% of this 50 is returned back to the sewer. Are you following me? Yes, sir. The question is, where does the rest of the 30% go? Right? Any idea? Where does the rest of the 30% go? Guys? What do you think? No, sir. Think like, I mean, this is common sense. Do you return back all the fresh water that is supplied to the uh, wastewater, uh, to the sanitary sewer? Guys, okay. any idea? No, sir. Sir, what's this? I have no idea. Uh, one thing is maybe you are using it for car washing car washing and if the car is rested upon a unpaved ground then the water will infiltrate to the ground and reach the ground water yes, sir. if you are using the roof gardening then some part of the water is transferred to the ev evapotranspiration right 
by the plant. So these things actually. Anyway. Now I already showed you once that in a residential area the wastewater wastewater flow is not like throughout the 24 hours is not a uniform it varies right water usage and wastewater flow first of all if you look at the fresh water usage characteristic this is the time sorry this is the q fresh water usage and this is the time for example from 12 am 6 am 12 pm again 12 am so the maybe it's like this right real life is like this are you following me yes sir. yes sir yes sir and now yes, sir. if this is the if this is the characteristics of the fresh water usage then of course the wastewater flow will follow this because whenever you use your wash you uh, you, you, you wash your hand with the fresh water after washing your hand immediately it becomes wastewater and runs towards the sewer so it will also be like this sewer flow will also be like this right maybe this is a bit lagged this will be a bit lagged here here am i right yes sir like this so there is a two peak that's okay that's also possible like it's also possible now this pattern may vary in seasons like in dry season and wet season in dry season means winter wet season means summer in summer of course we use more water in wet season we use less water right so there is seasonal variation if you look at this figure this is the dry flow uh, typically this is the wet, wet uh, flow in the wet period in summer in summer are you following me yes sir yes sir i told you that in summer we use more water at the same time if this is a combined sewer there will be more rainfall so wet period load will be higher than the dry period load this is the dry period load okay this is the dry period and this is the wet period clear yes sir this is the daily flow sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and again sunday so it varies if you take the average it will be it will go through this maybe okay so average dry weather flow what is the average dry weather flow this is the dry weather flow and this is the average so this is the average dry weather flow peak dry weather flow what is peak dry weather flow in a particular day these are the peaks peak 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 
peak, 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 and peak. In this figure, where is the peak? Here is the peak. Clear? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Among these peaks, this is the highest peak. Similarly, peak weight weather flow. Where is the peak weight weather flow? This is the peak weight weather flow. In the sum of the maximum peak dry weather flow plus the storm contribution during the wet weather period. Now, in your design, which one would you consider the highest one? Of course, the highest one means 0 0.05 or 0 0.09. Which one? 0 0.09, of course, 0.09. Am I right? Yes, sir. This one this is point zero four five or something like this. This is point zero nine approximately. So this is the one which you are gonna consider. Uh, you already know the peaking factor. Like what is peaking factor in here? Peaking factor is instantaneous flow divided by Q average okay instantaneous flow that means Q I divided by Q average for example if you take any time any time for example this time if the peaking factor here is uh, 1.2 and the Q average here is 5 then QI will be what guys this value this is a QI right so QI will be Picking factor multiplied by what? QI is picking factor multiplied by what? Q average, am I right? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, 5, that means Q average 5 into picking factor 1.2. So 1.2 into 5 will be the QI. And this is uh, above the average, right? You can see that this point is above the average line. So picking factor is Q instantaneous, Q max. If this is here, then Q instantaneous will be the Q max. Q max divided by Q average in, equals to the picking factor. usually we use the highest flow in design that means this one right so maximum you use maximum here uh, maximum daily picking factor is 2.5 to 1 maximum hourly picking factor is usually 3 to 1 minimum daily 0 0.67 to 1 and minimum hourly 0 0.33 to 1 Now finally, the Q design, as I told you, design flow, design flow will be what? Design flow will be this, guys, this, right? Q, let's call it Q maximum. Design flow will be, Q design will be, Q maximum plus what is remember inflow and infiltration remember you have to consider them inflow plus infiltration am I right yes sir yes sir I already told you peaking factor equals to what Q maximum divided by Q average so Q maximum will be what Q maximum will be Q average into picking factor. So 
class inflow class infiltration right clear yes sir yes sir yes. remember one thing that inflow and infiltration are not multiplied are not multiplied by the peaking factor because they are con they are considered as constant they are assumed as constant okay now this table gives you an idea uh, of average wastewater flow from different types of facilities like from apartment per person in an apartment residential apartment per person generates 200 to 300 liter of sewage or wastewater in a hotel this is 150 to 220 in an average home this is 190 to 350 a luxury home of course in a luxury home there are larger are, are greater facilities so wastewater generation will be higher and which is 300 to 550 larger than the average home 150 to 350 are you following me yes sir yes sir yes if you take the average it will be typical it is 380 here this is 280 okay semi dorm semi modern home summer cottage this has less 190 airport passenger 10 each passenger hotel bars industrial building okay if this is a hotel and guest if this is a hotel and guest that will produce 190 if this is a hotel and employee that will produce 40 so you may go through this. In industry, 85 to 90 per 95 percent of the water used will be generated as wastewater. Okay. Hospital, 650 per bed. Of course, because they have to use uh, higher amount of water for disinfection and cleanliness. Okay. In a restaurant, cafe, schools, apartment, coffee shop, okay, etc. Uh, at first, when you go, are going to design. Uh, sewer network at the very beginning what do you need to know I already showed you that if you look at the map know that it is area so I'm going to there again you need to know the map right because I told you that you have to follow what guys you have to follow the street alignment or layout right because you cannot pass your sewer under the building can you no sir no sir so you have to know the map you have to see where are the important structures what is the elevation because if you, you want to use a gravity sewer system then you have to go you have to go from the upper elevation to the lower elevation okay so you have to know what is the elevation if you go to google earth do you know how to use google earth Yes, sir. Let's go there. If you want to know the elevation of this road. What do you do? It gives you the elevation, guys. Look here. Put your, if you want to know the elevation here, okay? You put your cursor here, and then after putting the cursor here, you look here. Did you see the number? 
Yes, sir. Five meter. Five meter. So it will change. You see, it's changing as I'm moving my cursor to the to different points. It is it is changing. So at this location, what is the elevation? Five meter. Five meter. At this location, what is the elevation? Twelve meter. Twelve meter. So water will flow from here to there. Am I right? Yes, sir. Water will flow from here to there. What is this building, by the way? What is this location? Bushundan, Bushundan, right? Yeah. Query. BRT. Yeah, ever care. So this is uh, basically the Boshundra area. Okay. If you look at this, Hatil Chiller is Hatil Chiller. Ever care. So it should be here. Yeah. What is the elevation? In this Rampura bridge, guys, so eight meters. Eight, and what is the elevation here? Let's say here, sixteen meter, right? Yes, sir. 14 or sixteen, and here in Rampura, fifteen, almost same. Meter. almost same. Fourteen. Fourteen. So it's flat land. Actually, this is flat land. Nineteen, fifteen. So the water will flow from here to there. So what I am uh, trying to show here is uh, that you can have an approximate idea of the elevation of different point by using Google Earth. Okay. And you'll also have to explore the map. If you want to design a sewer network, first of all, you need to know the layout of that location. You can use a drone survey to have a clear picture and the elevation also, a drone survey. These are very popular now, okay? Yes, sir. So using that, you know the preliminary investigation, design consideration, and then design the Sure. So pre preliminary investigation involves what pertinent maps describe existing structure and utilities from the map, okay? Groundwater condition, characteristics of the soil, these things. Map source, as I told you, you can conduct a road survey, drone drone survey, then Raju and other uh, official information from the maps location of the streets first of all you need to know the streets as i told you because you're going to follow the street layout la drainage ditches public parks railways location of the buildings ponds streams you cannot uh, lay out your sewer in the middle of the pond can you so you have to know these things streams ponds land elevation conditions as the land elevation i told you the elevation of the land at different points, geological condition, okay? Information on existing structure and utilities. Okay. So this is a good figure that shows you the details of the drain. As you can see that how the wastewater is coming from the different parts of the building into the Building sphere. This is the building sphere, right? By now you know this is the building sphere. And then this is the main sphere, right? Yes, and sir. since there is an intersection, so you are using a manhole so that people can, or robot can get access and clean if needed be sometimes. Okay?
clear. Yes, sir. Okay. The design of sanitary sewer, basic design considerations are wastewater flow. You need to know how much wastewater will be generated. Hydraulic design equation, that means planning equation and other considerations. Sewer pipe material, which material you are going to use is for the pipe. Are you going to use concrete pipe? Are you going to use a concrete sewer? Are you going to use concrete, uh, are you going to use a steel sewer? Okay. So pipe material, then pipe size, diameter of the sphere. Minimum and maximum velocities. Okay, slopes and cover. Evaluation of alternative alignments or designs. Selection of appropriate sphere appurtenances. Okay. Sphere pipe materials. Ductile iron, reinforced concrete, pre concrete, polyvinyl chloride, vitrified clay, and glass reinforced plastic. So, all these materials can be used as sewer pipe materials. As you can see, this is a concrete sewer. This is a concrete sewer. This may be steel sewer. Okay. Mildly steel, maybe. Are you following me? This is PPC yes, sir. plastic sphere. Okay. So reinforced concrete pipe. Available size is usually 12 to 144 inches. But you know, concrete pipe is susceptible to corrosion. Okay. Due to hydrogen sulfide, as I told you. Ductile iron pipe. These are usually 4 to 54 inch. Then pipe size, uh, you know, minimum pipe size is 8 inches. So here, any minimum pipe size is 8, eight inches. Smallest sphere should be the larger than the building sphere connection in general use in the area. Right. Most common size of building sphere connection is 6 inches. Connection of 5 to 4 inches have been used successfully in some areas, with in some exception. But, you know, the minimum, minimum is basically 6 to 8 inches. Velocity, as I told you, the minimum velocity. Can you remember the minimum velocity I, I talked about? The minimum velocity. Why do you need the minimum velocity, guys? To clean the deposits. To clean the deposits, right? So that the sewer can clean by itself. So self cleansing. If there is a deposition of solid material so that the velocity can wash out are you following me yes sir yes, so this sir. is called minimum velocity minimum velocity or it can call self cleansing velocity why to wash out the or clean out the deposition clear yes sir and what is this minimum velocity this is usually two feet per second or 0.6 meter per second just unit change remember uh, at least one two feet per second that's it two feet per second okay so this should be two feet per second now on the other hand you have a maximum limit and that is eight to ten feet per second 
because if the velocity of the sewage is higher than 10 feet per second then there will be abrasion because higher is the velocity higher is the <coughs> turbulence right huh? higher is the turbulence in the sewage are you following me yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. higher is the thirst yes, so there will be abrasion so you should not go beyond 10 feet per second to avoid erosion of the shear. So minimum and maximum velocities may be specified in the state and local standards. So like in, in our case in Bangladesh National Building Code and these types of uh, uh, standards. In other country they have their, their standard. So minimum and maximum velocities may get changed a little bit, not much by the way, a little bit from one country to another country or locality. But usually this is 2 feet per second is the minimum velocity and 8 to 10 feet per second is the maximum velocity in the sewer. Sewer pipe slopes. Sewers with flat slopes may be required to avoid excessive excavation where surface slopes are flat or the changes in the elevation are small. Of course, you uh, may need to provide slope in the sphere, right? Slope. So that the water can have enough gravity, gravitational force for the gravity flow. And, you know, the minimum, there is a minimum limit of the slope. This is point triple zero eight. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Point. Yes, sir. Triple zero eight. Why minimum? Because if the slope is smaller than that, then it will be difficult to lay out in the field by the workers or the laborers. Practically, a minimum slope is point triple zero eight. So one by s, it should be. One triple zero eight. Okay. Uh, primary apportionment. Apportionment means the sewer components for sanitary spheres, manholes, drop inlet, building connection, junction chambers. Manholes, as I told you, why do you need manhole? You need manhole to regularly clean, to have an access to clean the sewer. So what are the what are the requirements of a good manhole? It should be large enough to provide easy access to the sewer. Of course, someone has to get access. Someone has to get access, right? So that at least one person get can get in this spacing should be adequate enough for a single person to get in and clean it or at least for a robot to go and clean it okay so that's the yes, sir. requirement of a manual and then you have what room for a worker to handle a shovel shovel means you know what the tool that he used to dig ground or you can use it to uh, remove the debris from the sewer bottoms are usually concrete sloping toward an open channel which is an extension of the lowest sewer okay let's see Okay. Uh, manholes in small sewers are usually about four feet in diameter. When the let's look at the figure of a sewer, then it will be easier for us. Okay, this is a typical figure of a manhole. Okay. 
Are you following me, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at this. This is a sphere. This is another sphere. Let's say these are building spheres. One building sphere from there, one building some sphere from here. They are discharging to the main sphere, and the main sphere is running in this direction. And the ground surface is here. Okay, and as I told you, this there is a certain distance here, six feet, ten feet, something like that. So you have to provide a step, am I right? So that a person can use these steps to go down, right? Now, look one thing. This portion has been inclined to re reduce this spacing. So here spacing is higher, here spacing is lower. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Why? Because uh, this is the manhole. If the manhole were like this, then this L would have been larger. So in that case, if a car moves through this manhole, then the load and the moment will be much higher. Moment and load, uh, basically moment will be higher. So there's a chance of this manhole cover to break down. Instead, if you do this, then significantly you can reduce the the ground l right so moment now will be lower clear clear yes sir so eccentric accent this is called eccentric cone eccentric cone section is provided rather direct rectangular section to reduce the size of the manhole lead the manhole lead is size to short lead when cover manhole lead providing greater strength to manhole lead under load like vehicle now if it's a combined sphere i mean if it's a domestic sphere only domestic or sanitary sphere then you may not have any hole here for the rainwater to go to pass through. But if this is a storm sphere or a combined sphere, then you have to provide hole to make provision for the storm or uh, storm water to enter. Right? Clear? Yes, sir. Now. Manhole spacing is important. How do you de determine that where you should put manholes? The number of manholes must be adequately spaced so that the spheres can be easily inspected and maintained. For spheres that are 48 inches and smaller, remember the spheres diameter of the sphere. If this diameter is 48 inches or smaller, then manholes should be located at Changes in size, slope, and direction. For example, here. The sphere will change the direction from here to there. Am I right? Hmm? right? Yes, sir. And from here to there, the sphere will change direction, right? Here. So you have to provide manhole here. Clear. And then yes, sir. Sometimes you have smaller sphere that is discharging into a main sphere, a building sphere discharging into a main sphere, larger sphere. 
then you have to provide manual here. Okay. Uh, for larger squares, these changes may be made without installing a manual. Squares, if it's 24 inch, less than 24 inch, place manholes at intervals not greater than 350 feet. That means after 350 feet length, you have to provide. If the square diameter is in this range, then place manholes at intervals not greater than 400 feet. feet. If the sphere is greater than 48 feet, uh, 48 inch, then manholes may be placed at greater intervals depending on the local conditions like breaks in grade and these things. So sometimes you have to use your uh, judgmental and engineering and other technical knowledge to in accordance with these guidelines, to decide where to put the manholes. Okay. So next day we'll start from the drop manhole. Another thing is remember that if this is a sewer cross section, then this outer surface top part, outer surface top part, this is called the crown, and inside surface top, top part, this is called the overt. And inside surface bottom, this is called the invert. There. And this is internal diameter. Right? This is internal diameter. And from here to there, this is external diameter. And from here to there, this is internal diameter. Clear? This up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any question? No question. Okay, then thank you very much. Have a good one and stay safe. Uh, sir, hello. Hold on. I need to.